What's up Big Bear Nation and welcome back to the homestead. So today I wanted to bring you along on an adventure that I'm going to pursue today. I am in love with carrots and I am in love with cabbage. They are two of my favorite vegetables in the world, but they don't grow well during the summer. They bolt, they're bitter, and they just don't do very well. So I've been researching a couple of different cold weather crops that have varieties that are heat tolerant. So today I'm going to plant those and I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I'm doing to try and help these things along. So before I get started in planting, I actually have to clear out this bed. So I've got to pull some of these carrots that have gone to seed and the peas that unfortunately I haven't been able to find a heat tolerant pea. So if you know of one, put it down in the comments below because I would love to know what those are because we absolutely love peas. So recently I was walking through my garden, checking on everything and something caught my eye and it was bright red amidst all the grass. And I've seen like the purple mustard growing or red mustard growing. I've seen, you know, collards growing, but I've never seen a turnip or a rutabaga or something like that, which is traditionally a cool weather crop growing as a volunteer in the middle of the summer. Never seen that. Well, that day I found a beet and it got me thinking if a volunteer beet will grow and thrive in the middle of the summer, there has to be some cool weather crops that have varieties that are heat tolerant that I could try. So I started doing some research and I found a couple of carrots that are actually pretty tasty that just happen to be heat tolerant. I was really excited about that because just recently we had harvested the stuff that I planted um, at the end of the winter. And those guys came up and we cooked them and they taste amazing. They're the Pusa Acida. Um, they're very, very dark purple almost black color but they are very rich in flavor and they're also very sweet so we decided that we would go ahead and try another round of those here in the midst of summer um, they're supposed to be heat tolerant so we'll see how that goes so while looking in my seed collection for the pusa acida seeds i also found two other seed types that look like they would also be heat tolerant. Um, the Pusa Radira and also the Black Nebula. So I went ahead and planted a couple of rows of those as well. And hopefully by the end of the summer, I'll be able to tell you how they did and how they tasted if they did actually grow. Now, another thing that I've never understood is that lettuce is a cool weather crop but we eat salad all summer long with tomatoes and peppers, all of the other stuff that is traditionally a hot weather crop. So I have found a couple of lettuce varieties that are supposed to be heat tolerant and bolt resistant. So I'm planning on planting those in with other plants so that those plants provide shade for these lettuce plants so that they don't get any direct sunlight because my theory is that if they're baking all day in direct sunlight that that could be part of the reason why they wilt and bolt. In one of my more recent videos I did a garden tour and I told you guys that I had a couple of spots that were empty from where we had grown and harvested radishes. So I am going to take those squares and I'm going to seed 
lettuce over here because these plants are all really well established and while there is some direct sunlight that they'll get first thing in the morning they'll be shaded by the afternoon sun because of all of the plants that are right here okay so i just cleared out all of the remnants of the radishes i am finding more and more every day that my favorite radish by far is the french breakfast because a lot of these other guys they take t twice as long to grow and you may have some that grow big and some that grow small and that's just frustrating the french breakfast at least in our soil produces well consistently throughout the year no matter what time of year we grow them so i went ahead and pulled all of these out and partially that's because some of my plants are are struggling because there was so much greenery from the tops of the radishes that it was just shading things that don't need to be shaded so i obviously need to get in here and tie up these tomatoes but in this area where there's this shade i think this is a perfect place for me to put more lettuce greens i'm gonna plant this is marvell some french name i'm not even gonna try and butcher it so i have paris island that i'm gonna grow now this is a type of romaine lettuce i have little gem uh, which i think is also kind of a, a romaine ish kind i have bronze beauty and then I have the good faithful that everybody plants is the black seeded Simpson. So I'm going to kind of sprinkle these out here and just see what takes. And we'll do this as a cut and what do they call it? Cut and go kind of salad greens. We're not going to grow like balls of lettuce. We're just going to, as they grow up, we'll cut some lettuce off of it, the leaves make those for salads and then wait for them to grow back. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna plant, there's two things. I'm gonna do some cabbage and some broccoli. Now this broccoli, not really sure that it's a traditional broccoli. It says that the tender stalks taste like a cross between asparagus and broccoli, only sweeter. Very easy to grow broccoli like plant. All parts are delicious. So that's what we're going to plant. This is Chinese broccoli. So we're going to do that one. And then I'm going to plant Jersey Wakefield cabbage because it's supposed to also be heat tolerant. And I love cabbage. We love having sauerkraut at our house. So I'm going to try these and see how they do. Now, broccoli and cabbage both are they turn out to be very big plants. So they need a lot of spacing. So I'm using my seeding square to be able to kind of measure those things out. I'm not really good sometimes at eyeballing when you're trying to space out for just one plant per square foot. So this actually helps me a lot to be able to visualize that space. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to plant is strawberry spinach. I've never had strawberry spinach before, but I've heard people talk about how good it is. It says that it's supposed to yield red berries that are good in salads, but it also produces greens that taste like spinach. Um, so I'm going to just sprinkle these in here with my carrots and I'm getting ready to plant some beans on this trellis. So those will also provide some shade for these plants as they start to grow. Okay, so now we're done. Now we wait, right? I've put all of these lettuces in the ground. I've put some spinach, some carrots, some cabbage, and some broccoli. So fingers crossed, these guys will start to grow. I'm getting ready to water them all in. Next month, I will give you an update on our next garden tour. Now, if you liked this video, definitely go check out this video from our last garden tour. Thank you for stopping by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless and have a nice day.